I'm Marisol Soengas. I'm the uh, head of the melanoma group at the Spanish National Cancer Research Center in Madrid. And I'm Ashi Rue Ratner. I am the Ira Brin Professor of uh, Immunology, Microenvironment and Metastasis, and I co-lead that program at the Worcester Institute. So, Dr. Soengas, how did call, call me, call me Marisol, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Marisol, so, how sorry. did you meet uh, Dr. Weiner right now? How we, I, we met a long time ago, <laughs> actually, and we met at uh, one of the SMR uh, congresses, and I will always uh, remember that because she gave a great talk, as, as always. And then I thought, oh, I, I, this person I really want to meet. And I think I actually clicked uh, <laughs> afterwards uh, because we are both very social, we're very active, and then I think at dinners, and uh, so from then on, I think we have been, you know, uh, meeting each other many times a year. And, and I think part of the, the SMR, the success, I think, is because you get to know people scientifically, but also how they are. And then, I um, mean, this long-lasting collaboration that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this it's become a really deep friendship, which I yes. think is um, something that's really special about this meeting, hmm. is that these collaborations and these interactions develop into true friendships, which yeah. is pretty rare, actually, in science. Yeah, it's I, as a trainee when I see this friendship and I hear about <laughs> it. It's so motivational, and I would, I hope that I find a friend like you. <laughs> and, you know, and twenty years down the line, same story. Right. Yeah, but I think melanoma, the melanoma field is particular for this. I think I that we both have been in other fields where people are much more competitive. Yeah. Uh, here you can really present the data, particularly at the beginning where it was small. Now the, the SMR meetings have been growing, but still. Uh, so we can present data. In fact, part most, I mean, the, the, I guess the, the interest part, the interesting part of this meeting is that there are data that are not really impressed, so this is great. Right. So. And Rohit and I were actually talking about that earlier today, yeah. like we were talking about the fact that, you know, we actually have a very strict social media policy mm -hmm. because people are presenting things that aren't even ready to go into a paper yeah. format. So. Which is totally acceptable. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, actually, the next question is towards you, Dr. Mm. Weiratna. Uh, please call so, me Ashi. <laughs> <laughs> Ashi, uh, you are based at Wistar in mm -hmm. the U.S. Yeah. And Marcel, you are at Spain, the uh -huh. Spanish Cancer Institute. How do you find time to interact with each other <laughs> the long-distance friendship? So. so, you know, I think both of us have families. Like, I grew up in South Africa. My family is mm -hmm. all over the world. My mom's in Sri Lanka. My brother and sister are here in the UK. And so for me, communicating with someone frequently who's very far away has never been an issue. That's my life. That's how I've always <laughs> lived my life. And, um, you know, especially now, it's, we Skype, we yeah. text all the time. When I'm having a bad day, I shoot her a text. <laughs> but also, I guess we get invited to many, yes, uh, many conferences. So I think we at least we see each other at, at least, least four three, times, yeah, a year. four times a wow. year. Yeah. Uh, so I guess part of the being women in science that is great that we also get yeah. invited. We be chairs of sessions and we chair each other's <laughs> uh, yeah. talks many times. But also, I think it's important we, we are part of a collaborative grant together, a team mm -hmm. science with other female uh, researchers. That's actually very nice. The Melanoma Research Alliance support this and L'Oreal. So we, yeah, we have been keeping in touch and we are actively collaborating on this. And uh, so again, next question is towards you, Ashley. You have published a lot of seminar papers in the last 20 years, and the productivity of our lab has been <laughs> incredible. So I was reading about your one publication, which showed an interesting association between age and predicting response to immunotherapy. Right. Now, that is such, a, such an interesting finding. So can you, do you want to shed some light on this finding and how you're, being, how you're following up this in clinical settings or further studies? Sure. So... Um... It was for us a very surprising finding because we had a study about a year earlier that showed the opposite in targeted therapy. So patients who were older who yeah. got targeted therapy fed poorly. And so we went into the immunotherapy field thinking it was gonna be the same mm. and you know, and then to find that the older patients actually did better was really surprising. And it turned out that it was largely due to changes in the immune microenvironment in the young versus aged. Mm -hmm. um, there were more Tregs actually in the young patient tumors than in the aged patient tumors. And when we modeled it in the mouse, it was independent of genetic and mutational 
burden, so a little bit like your Dana mm -hmm. was talking about today in the sessions. Um, and so that was really interesting to us because it told us that there's something going on with the aged immune system that's driving differences in the way older patients respond to therapy. And so how are we following that up? Mm -hmm. We're actually looking in the neoadjuvant setting because there's now a lot of interest mm -hmm. in treating patients very mm -hmm. early in mm -hmm. the disease and before tumors are removed. And we find that when tumors actually go to the lymph node, they create um, a new TME in the lymph node. And that actually involves a, a spike in Tregs. And the Tregs go to the primary tumor and that happens more frequently in young versus aged patients because young patients get more lymph node mats. So. Wow, that is such an interesting project. So I really envy the guy. <laughs> I, will, I will follow up on that. <laughs> okay. Yes. No, it's inspiring um, many people on this. So because it has so much uh, implications, so it was so great to see this data out there. Yeah. <laughs> and Marisol's beautiful work in lymphatic <laughs> metastases, right? It's yeah. telling us a lot, and we're hoping. Yeah. We've talked about us being able to use her model so mm -hmm. that she can tell you about. Well, she's mentioning about a mouse model that now we call it MetaAlert because it's actually a little bit of uh, science fiction uh, <laughs> when I explain it. Science. So, yeah, <laughs> because the, these animals light up and light up very early on during tumor uh, development. And they light up because we have engineered them precisely to visualize very early events that are associated with expansion of the lymphatic vasculature. So it's like, uh, so the tumor cells can disseminate through various roads and one is the lymphatic. So then, so when they, they light up, so we know where and when. And this is very important because really we cannot detect single cells in the body. It's very difficult. This is actually one of the challenges. Mm -hmm. Single cell and even micrometastases. But we can detect how tumor cells communicate. So as she's interested in the microenvironment, different cell types in, in the microenvironment, we are interested in the vasculature. And also now the follow-up is not only the, how the cells communicate to the, the vasculature to create like kind of uh, like, uh, you know, a highways for the, for the tumor cells to disseminate, but also how they uh, modulate the immune system. And this is very important. So how come tumor cells very early on and at a distance, yeah. so block and, and uh, shed from uh, recognition of the immune system. So this is uh, the, the model. And, and the, so the models are a tool. So we, the, because we always get asked about, okay, a, a mouse is a mouse and a human is a mm -hmm. human. Of course, but uh, so I guess the, the beauty of these animals is that they uh, allow us to identify genes that then we can validate in patient material. And in fact, I think the validation is uh, the, the key part and, and how can animals help in shorten the time and shorten the money uh, needed to identify targets that then you can target them in uh, pursue therapeutically. So this is how that does sound very, very, <laughs> very interesting, I would say. And definitely, I think it's one of the science fiction that I would love to read about. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes so because <laughs> hopefully we'll have a good ending. Sure, sure. That's really incredible. Mm -hmm. It really is amazing yeah. work.